six. Oh, sure. Um, so it says liquid is poured into a spherical container to a height of h centimeters. Uh, the radius of the sphere is 22 centimeters, and the top of the liquid is a circle with radius 10 centimeters. Work out the height of the liquid H. Okay, so this is the trick. So this is 22 here, right? Because that's a radius. This, we don't know. I'm going to call that piece X then, right? That's not a full radius. Agreed? Okay. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to draw in this piece. How long is that? That's a radius. It's also 22. So what I have is a right triangle there, and calculate x, and then add it to 22. So I have x squared plus 10 squared is equal to 22 squared. So x is the square root of 22 squared minus 10 squared. So h is 22 plus whatever that is. Does that feel okay there? So the trick was getting identifying that, that those things were radii. And if you got that, it should it would have been relatively straightforward, but it's not at all obvious. Like all those radii going on in there. That's a little tricky. Did that come out to be the right value, Cass? Oh, you don't have the answer for six. But that's how you do it. You're welcome. Who else has some? Eva? Twelve. Okay. Okay. So twelve, we have uh, the diagram given shows a cylinder with a radius of twenty. Centimeters. The height of the centimeter or the height of the cylinder is 60 centimeters. And it says calculate the value of x. And the value of y. We call this D, we call this C, we call this A, we call that X and that Y. Okay. Um, let's see here. What's going to be the easiest way to do this? Oh, it also tells us C is the midpoint. Good. Sorry, missed that. Okay, so I'm going to convert compute x first. So if I think about it, x is this is going to be the difference in the angle d a. They called this b minus angle c a b. Does that make sense to you guys? So DAB contains more than all of X, and CAB is that extra past X. So I can compute that. Um, DAB is going to be opposite of 60 and adjacent of 40.
and CAB is an opposite of 30 and an adjacent of 40. Cass, I see you punching that into your calculator. Tell me when you get a number for that. Okay, that seems reasonable. Right, just looking at the picture, it's probably going to be a relatively small angle. So far, so good, Ava? Yeah. Uh, so next, to calculate angle Y, I could do a couple of different things. So I could calculate this angle Z and do 180 minus Z to get Y. Or I could do like, now that I know angle X, I could use the law of sines or something um, to calculate that angle Y. I think it's probably easier to just to find the Z, that angle Z, and then do 180 minus Z. Since we have everything else there. So Z, again, opposite is... 40 and adjacent is 30 so I can do that and that should give me my value for y personally I like to use right triangles whenever possible I didn't need to use the law of sines or cosines there you could have done this problem doing it that way I think it's a little bit more algebra to do that but that's what I would have done there. Cass, you punched that in your calculator. What did you get there? Okay. And that seems about right also. Looking at the picture, that looks like it should be an obtuse angle. And that's certainly what we're getting. So that seems to jive there. I don't have the printout of the answers here sitting on my desk, but those seem about right. Does that feel okay with you? Okay. Again, this problem, that was not the only way to do it. I just think is the simplest calculation to do it. Uh, anybody else? Oakley McDoakley's, let's rock and roll on to the next step.